everybody, we are back with another Sci-Fi Friday review on Saturday. And we just finished watching Dark Matter, so we're totally caught up, so time to do the review. If you are not totally caught up on Defiance, Killjoys, and Dark Matter, you're going to want to skip this video until you get a chance to catch up, because everything we say from this point forward is going to be a spoiler. Starting with Defiance, Season 3, Episode 9, titled When Twilight Dims the Sky Above. And this was a completely different style episode for Defiance. Yeah. And it worked really, really well. Whereas Defiance is usually kind of a sci-fi, western-y kind of thing, this one really came across more as like a political thriller. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Um... And, and it worked remarkably well for such a radical deviation from the normal. So uh, Nolan kind of goes a bit crazy. Um, he starts hallucinating himself. Yeah. Which um, a younger I'm, version of himself. Yeah, when him he's still when a he was soldier. The, yeah, when yeah. he was a soldier. And um, you know, on the one hand, you you're like, how does he not realize this is a hallucination? But on the other hand, if you've never experienced hallucinations, you really don't know if you're capable of telling the difference. Now, I really thought Daytac wouldn't come back until next season. Because there's, yeah, there's, you know, there's too. only a couple episodes left, so I thought, okay, he's going to be like on the run, and he'll come back a little later. But no, he actually comes back in this episode, and he's he comes back with like the legitimate uh, VC, the the, the uh, Voltanus Collective. Yeah, Voltanus Collective. Couldn't think of Voltanus there for <laughs> a second, but like the the actual Voltanus Collective because. Romtok, he was like a rogue soldier. He was a rogue agent. So everything that he did was not signed off by the actual VC. So when Daytech comes back and he is being escorted by, it was like the vice president or somebody. Yeah. Somebody, you know, really high up. He comes back kind of full of piss and vinegar. Yeah, he comes back a little cocky. I yeah. think he expected to be welcomed back and he was sorely disappointed because yeah. they were not, they were like, no, you were supposed to die. We still haven't forgiven you for yeah. being a spy and blowing up your arch. Yeah. Daytag, he, he's borderline delusional yeah. about half the time. Like, he thought he would come back to Defiance with, like, a hero's welcome yeah. and ticker tape parade and, hey, all hail the hero. And he's, like, way disappointed. Yeah. And, and he's truly offended. Like, yeah, and I think that that kind of goes to establish... The difference between the Voltans and the humans is yeah. a human would kind of know that if yeah. if that it, like a human in that same situation would have ran and been like, oh, thank God I survived this, but I can never go back. Yeah. And a Voltan is like, oh, well, I just saved the whole city. Who cares yeah. that I was spying on it for these same people and yeah. blew up the arch? I'm a hero now. Yeah. Instead of it was more like, no, you kind of owed us, and now we're kind of even, but we still yeah. don't forget. It seems like the Voltanus Collective in general, and specifically the, uh, ca yeah, the Castathans, that, the, yeah, they are quick to anger, but they're also very quick to forgive. It's like a cultural thing that just humans aren't like that. And they're very cocky because yeah. not only Daytech, who, you know, his whole thing, but the VC had a rogue agent who attacked and nearly decimated the city, and they come in to organize peace talks. Yeah. Like, they don't come to apologize and give them anything for, like, oh, my God, we're so sorry this was a rogue agent here, let us make it up. So he's like, no, hey, that was a rogue agent, not our fault. Um, we yeah. are sorry about that. But hey, let's negotiate a peace treaty now. Yeah. They, they, <laughs> they treated like the whole Romtok thing a little casually. Yeah. Which is very consistent with the VC. Yeah. And, especially and the Cast Castians as well. Yeah. yeah. Especially the Castathans and like the, the vice president or whatever she is, I forget her title. She is Castathan. So that... that arrogance and that kind of almost like aloofness yeah. kind of comes through a little bit. So also when Daytech gets back, Stama just, she she's like, you know, peace out to Efkin, my husband's back, and she just runs away and leaves to Efkin. And to Efkin is absolutely devastated by this. Yeah, he's not, we finally get to see how he truly feels about her. And yeah. he actually, like, he actually does care for her quite yeah. a bit. It's not just a um, casual thing for him. So, yeah. um, you know, before before now, we weren't quite sure. Because, yeah. you know, I, I think 
he's done things to try to distance himself from her, but I don't think it's worked. I think he still has those feelings there, and yeah. we, we see that in this episode. Like, he invites her to basically run away with him to Australia for when he brings the rest of the Omex down, and he's like, you know, help me usher in this, this new way of life for my people. And she ends up having to shoot him down because she's taking her husband back. She is. I mean, for all their their um, two-facedness, Daytek and Stama are really devoted to each other. Yeah. And, and that's a really interesting relationship in the show because they are totally backstabbing each other all the time. And they, but, it's another example of the Cassians. They're easy to anger, but they're also very easy to forgive yeah. and forget. <laughs> Another thing that I thought would probably get put off until next season happened in this episode, and that is Doc woke up Kinsey. Yes, and, I mean, this was bro- obvious it was going to happen. Yeah. Uh, Kinsey infected Doc with a little neck jewelry thing and um, then gets set up. You knew that the Doc was going to bring her back. Yeah. She is smart enough to do so. Yeah. Um, it was just a matter of when. I thought that story would get stretched out a little bit. So the fact that Kinsey, you know, she gets exiled back up to the Omex ship and gets brought down. Almost immediately. Really early yeah. in the very next episode. So that seemed a little bit rushed to me. It also kind of makes me, it, it doesn't bode well for Kinsey in my opinion. I think that... Um, I think Tefkin's going to have to put her down. Yeah, I think Kinsey's going to die. I, I don't think, like, and I really wanted her character to survive. One, because... The Omex are amazing, and you need more than just one of them. And two, she's really, really awesome, and I would love to cosplay her. And how do you cosplay a character who dies right away? <laughs> it's. I, I thought that that story would get stretched out a little bit, and it yeah. looks... I don't know if they've only got, I think, one episode left, and then the season is done. So if they actually rush it to the point where they wrap that up, I'm going to be disappointed, because I think... That yeah. story has some legs if they really decide. I would to. rather a cliffhanger to next season than them rush this story. Yeah. And finally, because of Nolan's hallucinations and his delirium and everything that's going on in his freaking warped, traumatized brain, he thinks that the VC who are there for genuinely for peace talks with, first of all, the humans and the Omex. Yeah. Like they're trying to do a lot in this one, it's like peace conference slash soiree. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so they're trying to accomplish a lot, but he thinks they're there to initiate an attack. And he hallucinates like pieces to bombs and stuff. And in the process of his investigation and his confrontation of the VC, uh, v, the VCVP, <laughs> he accidentally shoots her because he thinks her wine glass is a gun. Yeah. And then him and Arissa are on the run. They get caught, and Nolan's getting extradited to South America. Yeah, and I think I, Brazil. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I could Brazil, be wrong, but yeah. I think Brazil. Yeah, and I, I think that definitely gets milked to next season. Yeah, definitely. Um, which is um, a good thing, because that, that story has some legs, too, just like Keynesy's. Yeah. So I, I don't think they can really wrap that up in, in one episode, and I hope they don't, because I want to see what the rest of the VC is doing, like, down in, like, their main hub. Yeah. Um, now, we did kind of get, like, from the previews for next episode, I don't think Nolan actually makes it to Brazil, because mm-hmm. um, Keynesy, I think, has got a major crush like she's on gonna bust him out. Nolan, so I think she's going to bust him out. Yeah. But that in itself is going to lead to a very interesting story, because Nolan and Arissa can't be far apart. Right. So what's going to happen to them when Keynesy only takes Nolan? Yeah. Like, that is going to be a very interesting story. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that because, like, like she said, I, Kinsey has. I think she has a little bit of a crush on Nolan, much the same way Tefkin has kind of an obsession with Stama. I think Kinsey feels that for Nolan, or maybe that's just us projecting our shippingness <laughs> onto the show. I, I don't think so because I totally <laughs> ship Nolan with Amanda. See, I don't anymore. I do. I, I just think those two should eventually end up together. See, I don't, that, 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 that to me is the obvious No, Now, Tefkin and Stama, I oh, totally yeah. ship that. Yeah. I kind of ship her with him and with Daytime, <laughs> which is terrible, but I, I, I love the dynamic of the three of what, them. What would you call that ship, Tefkin and Stama? Stefkin? Stefkin. Stefkin. <laughs> We're, we're totally Stefkin shippers. Yes. <laughs> but, 
Again, I, Nolan and, and Amanda, I just don't buy it. It doesn't do anything for me as far as story-wise. I would much prefer... I think it would be more interesting if Nolan and Keensey hooked Yeah, up. I do think it would be more interesting. And I am excited to... If that is a thing. Um, which, <laughs> if, if they do make that a thing, maybe Keensey sticks around for a little bit. Maybe they which don't have to kill off right really away. Like yeah, like yeah, I really like Keensey. Oh Steensy, oh my god, wow. Oh my gosh, wow. I, re I really like uh, Keensey because just that threat that she might just decide to eat you. Yeah. I, th I think that's kind of awesome. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah. Okay, moving on to Killjoys, Season 1, Episode 8, Come the Rain. And this was a really great yes. episode of Killjoys. This was a great Johnny episode of oh, yeah, Killjoys. Yeah. Because Johnny's always a great character. He's always... But he's always kind of in the background mm -hmm. to Dutch and Davin. But not in this episode. Right. <laughs> so, right off, jo Johnny, he, he's trying to f basically find out if he, Dutch, and Davin can still be a team. Because after last episode, when Davin, you know, got switched on and tried to kill them both, it's obviously the team is broken. Yeah. But can it be repaired? And that's jo what Johnny's trying to find out. So he sends them off on a warrant, and the warrant is actually a device that he created, and it's basically a... a a lie detector test and they have to you know take turns answering questions truthfully to reactivate the ship because they've been stranded above the planet right above the the black rainstorm which is actually gorgeous from the yeah, top yeah it was really really pretty but it's it was really interesting because yeah they were like well shit i guess is what we have to do and they got all the way to the end until it got to the question for dutch do you trust davin and no matter what she said, it read as a lie. And that was really interesting. Yeah. it's It may, means... She's conflicted. She, yeah, she's conflicted. She doesn't know if she trusts him or not. Because yeah. even when she asked him to throw a knife at her to hit the bad guy behind her, she backed out. Yeah. But she tried it after that, and it still showed as she was lying, uh, yeah. regardless of what she said. So it's... Her inner self is not sure if she yeah. trusts Davin or not. Which I think is a really interesting development between these two. Yeah. Because all season long, it's been pointing toward, okay, Dutch and Davin are going to hook up. And then they did have sex last episode, but then Davin tried to kill her. And now she is totally off of, you know, Team Davin. Yeah. And she's got this inner conflict about him. And now the team is genuinely, it's broken. Like, Davin's off the team for now. Yeah. Which I think is a good development for the show. I'm, I, I want to see what Davin does on his own. But, you know, the majority of this episode, Dutch and Davin were not important. It was all about Johnny, which was yeah. a nice change of pace. Because since, since the beginning, it's basically been Dutch and Davin with whatever Johnny's doing. Yeah. And this one, it was Johnny with whatever Dutch and Davin yeah. were doing. And Johnny, let me tell you, he was pretty incredible this uh, yeah. this episode. Um, so they have this black rain, and it's basically all the pollution and garbage that they've done to this planet rains down on them. And uh, if you're caught out in it, you're going to die because it's, it's like acid rain on steroids. Yeah, it's basically raining pretty much sulfuric acid is what it's Yeah, like. and... Um, one of the interesting things is people who are said to be executed, they just kind of wait for the black rain to come, and then they chain them to the town square and let yeah. everybody watch it. That kind of gives a little insight into what the society is like, because yeah. that's pretty barbaric. The biggest main Johnny moment is the criminals cast out the, um, the company guy into the black rain, yeah. and he kind of, he totally fakes them and says he was our exit plan. Takes a jacket, puts it over his head, and runs out after him. Yeah. And on the way out, spots the little rivet tool or uh -huh. whatever tool it's, it's that like was. A, it's like a rivet pistol that yeah, they were shooting this thing that they they to uh, hold the prisoners in yeah, place. Yeah, it was. He sees that, and just like out of the corner of his eyes, he goes over there. He gets the guy. He brings him back, and on the way back, grabs it, and then just kind of he is just he's just fed up. And yeah. he's, the guy's like, what's your plan? What's your plan? And Johnny's like, bam, bam, bam. That's my plan. And it was just amazing. And then he orders a shot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it was finally like, he did something absolutely heroic and badass. And he did not make light of it. He just sat there like, yeah, I deserve this now. Yeah. I just saved everybody. Yeah. And that, that was really awesome. This is a great Johnny episode. Yes, great if, Johnny episode. If you're not watching Killjoys and you're watching our reviews, take it from us right now. 
Watch Killjoys. Killjoys it is, is awesome. really good. It had a couple of slow episodes in the beginning, but after that, it's absolutely amazing. Yes. Okay, moving on to Dark Matter, Season 1, Episode 9, titled Episode 9. You gotta love Dark Matter with their easy episode oh, titles. I love their episodes. Absolutely amazing. So, this was an interesting episode about four. Yeah, I like how every single episode kind of revolves around yeah. a different character, and now we're getting four story. There does seem to be this trend in, in the last two episodes anyway, so I don't know if you can call it a trend yet. But like one of the one of the, the crew members leaves to go do something that they have do something about something that they found out about themselves. And so and since it's only been two episodes in a row, can't really call it a trend yet. But if that continues, then I, I think that could get a little stale. Yeah, I hope they don't continue. I, like I like that we got one right after the other, but I mean. I think we need a, a break yeah, from that and, and formula. It's like, now you've seen if if you leave the ship and you don't tell anybody, the whole crew's going to come after you. So why would anybody else do it? Yeah. Like it doesn't make any sense to like it doesn't logically make any sense to continue this. Yeah. Um, it, it made total logical sense for Four to do this. Yeah. Because, he's because very independent. And, and not only that, Four is so quiet and away from everybody. He probably assumed that they wouldn't notice he was missing until he was finished with whatever he needed to do. Yeah. But he was also very considerate because he didn't want to drag them into his yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah. So on, on some level, yeah, yeah, he is very distant from everybody else. But on another level, he really does genuinely care about his crewmates. Yeah. He is, this episode alone proves he is an extremely honorable man. Yeah. Um, because there were, there was many moments, like the fact that he didn't bring the, uh, the rest of the crew in on his expedition, that was very honorable. Yeah. And... When, um, the guy's name's escaping me, but when the guy who captures uh, Akita. him, Akita, when he captures him and is shot, he's like, let me dress your bandages, I won't escape. And he does that. He, he honors that. That yeah. was extreme, like, he's extremely honorable. Yeah. And the android is still trying to work out whatever problems she thinks she has with her programming, but that doesn't really develop anymore. That just kind of happened. Um, and that that one there, it kind of seems like she's kind of running it by all the crew members. Yeah. She's ran it by five. Um, five, and now she's ran it by three. And both of them told her, you know, like, stay we, how we you are. Like we kind of like you how you yeah. are. And um, I think she's, I think that's going to be a trend where she's going to run it by each member and then yeah. finally realize that they're okay with her flaw and yeah. maybe then maybe be satisfied be okay with it. To yeah. Too. To me, the most interesting moment in the show was when one told two the, his entire story, at least as far as he knows the entire story, about his former life. You know, he had a wife, three is the prime suspect uh, in, in her murder, and in one, basically, to him, it's basically a foregone conclusion. Three did it, yeah. even though there hasn't been any kind of conviction or chart, you know, anything like that. To me, that seemed pretty, like... That was kind of obvious. I knew he was going to tell her. It was just a matter of when he was going to yeah. tell her. Because from the beginning, we've said from the beginning, one is not like the others. One and five are kind of these innocent people who are kind of stuck in with all these mm -hmm. criminals. They're, those two are drastically different in personality from everybody else. There are uh, radical similarities and differences between one and five. Because one sees himself as basically not part of the crew at all. He's, he's he's there, and he recognizes that this is his situation right now, but he still sees himself as separate. Five sees herself as a member of the crew, which is very much different for how one feels. Okay, to me, the most shocking moment of this episode is toward the end, when Four and Akita, they're saying their goodbyes, because Four's been rescued now by the rest of the, the crew of the Raza, and he's like, you know what? Give, give my my stepbrother a message for me. And he's like, of course. And four kills him. And I didn't see that coming at all. It was like, wow, shocker. Yeah, that was a shocking moment at first. And then I thought about it and it kind of makes sense. And the episode concludes with the Raza being ambushed on their way to like basically a paradise planet with like <laughs> waterfalls and stuff. But they get ambushed by three destroyers. And it's like cliffhangers. It's the first time they've done you know a yeah. cliffhanger like this. Like you, know, each episode kind of has a reveal toward the end. Yeah. Like last episode, we got you know three killed 
one's wife, maybe. But this episode, genuine cliffhanger. They're ambushed. Yeah, they are in the middle of a bad situation. Yeah. You gotta tune in next week. It's it's just about okay. done with season one, so mm -hmm. I'm really excited to see uh, the, how the rest of the season shakes out, especially since, I mean, I assume we gotta have some kind of resolution with the Raza, you know, deciding to kind of come together as a crew. Because right now, everybody is still basically out for themselves. Yeah, basically, so, except for five. Except for, except for five, yeah. She's like, come on, we're she's all... She's like, yay, team! <laughs> yeah, she, she's, she's totally their cheerleader. Yeah, she And is. they're like, stop. <laughs> but stop, I, I, I think leave. by the end of the season, they have to become, you know, basically a consolidated yeah. I think crew. there's going to be some something that happens in this next episode, or if there's another one. There's going to be something that happens before the end of the season that's going to solidify them as a group. Yeah. What it is, I don't know. Okay, and that's it for our Sci-Fi Friday on Saturday review. This was Defiance Season 3, Episode 9, Killjoys Season 1, Episode 8, and Dark Matter Season 1, Episode 9. So, really hope you guys enjoyed this video. We would love to know what you guys thought of the shows. Let us know. Talk about it in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.